Hey everybody, Cody with Princess Craft RV, and today is the day we go through the 2023 Barefoot Trailer by New Camp. So come along with me and let's go through how to operate this bad boy. Starting right up front here. It's gonna ride on a two inch trailer ball. Once you get your tow vehicle backed underneath it, you're gonna use your manual crank here with the front crank jack up and down. Lower down onto the ball and to latch it, once you're down onto the ball, we're just gonna push this latch closed. Make sure that the latch is fully seated there and cannot be lifted. You should be able to see that that hook is inserted there. To release it, you're just gonna pinch up on that and pull up and that is gonna release it from the ball. A Couple other things that do need to hook up to your receiver hitch on your tow vehicle is gonna be your safety chains and your safety breakaway cable for your electric brakes. Um, now that the safety breakaway cable does need to ride on its own clip or carabiner onto the receiver hitch. And the safety chains do need to create or cross or create a basket underneath the hitch and then they clip on. Last thing we're gonna plug into the tow vehicle is gonna be our seven-way plug. This is gonna run all of your lights and your charge line to your battery on board the trailer. Now moving just back from there, we're gonna have a couple of storage compartments here on the front. This first one is just held down with a little thumb screw. You just unscrew it until it releases all the way off. And this is a great place to store maybe a short sewer hose or water hose, something like that. So nice little basket that they have now started incorporating to put it back on. You're just gonna thread this back down, get the hole lined up and screw it all the way down. The compartment right up here on the front, the big compartment is held closed with just the thumb latch. Now this does have a really good weather seal on it. So if you push on the door, it's gonna make it easier to get that lock twisted. Once you raise this open inside, we're gonna find propane cylinders and your spare tire. Now the propane cylinders do have to come out in order to access your spare. So let's go over removing those real quick. First off, make sure your service valves on your cylinders are closed. So all the way to the right. And then I'm gonna go ahead and loosen up the holder, which on this model, they're using a chain um, and a, a cross T-bar. Once you get there, you're gonna be able to tip your cylinders and then you can remove your service lines and take your cylinders out. Now, even though these cylinders are smaller than what you would see on a, what I would call a typical unit, they are still refillable. Uh, so these can go to any station and get refilled. Now you're probably not gonna find something like this to exchange. So make sure you have plenty before you head out. Once you get in here, you will have access to your spare tire and it is just held in with a wing nut here in the back. And you're just gonna loosen that wing nut out and then that's gonna allow you to remove your spare tire and use it. Uh, to put these back in, it's just gonna be the opposite. We're gonna set these back in here. Now I like to get them put in and kind of position at the same time as I'm hooking up the uh, pigtails to make sure that they are not riding heavily against the spare tire because the things are a little tight in here. We don't want a lot of pressure on them. So you may need to do some maneuvering before you tighten them down in place. So I like to get them put on and then get everything else situated here. And get these put back in. Just like that. And then we can close it and latch it. Okay, moving on around to the side here. We're gonna have uh, four corner stabilizers. Now the unit does come with a extended reach crank handle to help you get under there. I'll show you that once we get around uh, to the side here. And this is gonna be your gray water drain, which is gonna be for your sink and shower. And to drain that, it is gonna be this gray pull handle right here. You're just gonna pull that out with your sewer hose attached to the uh, dump and that is gonna allow that to dump out. Aldi exhaust, now this will produce warm air uh, whenever you're running the Aldi on propane for either heat or hot water. Our uh, Nautilus station right here, which is gonna be for our water connections. Inside, we're gonna find several valves. We're gonna have uh, green and blue and it shows you right here in 
which way to place those valves depending on what you want to do. Um, winterizing is going to be just that. If you're getting ready to winterize it, it's going to allow you to suck antifreeze in into the lines that it needs to. If you're going to be running on city water, which is going to be this connection right here, you're going to hook in, make sure your valves are facing like they are right now and you're good to go. You don't need to operate your water pump at all to do that. Now, if you want to fill your fresh water tank, it's going to be this one. Again, you're still going to be on this port. You're just going to turn your green valve. I'm sorry, you're going to turn your blue valve down and that's going to allow this to fill the fresh water tank. Once you're done with that, you're going to want to move this to dry camp mode. So this one's going to turn and that one's going to go that way. And that's going to allow your water pump to pull that water from the fresh water tank. Now, don't forget to switch these back to wherever you need them for future use. The one on the left is going to be for sanitizing and winterizing, uh, which is sanitizing is just getting your fresh water system sanitized and clean, ready for use. Winterization is just for winterization. Over to the left here, you will see our water heater bypass valve. So that allows us to bypass the Aldi water heater. Last couple of things in this compartment, also tucked in here by the water heater bypass valve is gonna be our solar port. It's just an SAE port. Your cables would run in through the water channel here. So this is where you would bring your water hose in or any other accessories that you're gonna bring in and connect in here. And that's pretty much it in this. And this compartment is keyed locked. Now, just in front of the uh, wheel on the passenger side of the trailer, on the frame, you will find your low point drains. You're gonna find your cold water and your hot water low points. This is where you're gonna wanna drain your fresh water system for storage and for winterization. 30 amp service. It's gonna be L-shaped prong. We're gonna match that up with our L-shaped prong on the trailer side, push together, twist to the right to slightly lock, and then we're gonna snug down the plastic lock ring. Now we wanna make sure we get a good tight connection here. If it gets loose, we can generate heat, and that's where we start seeing cord ends burned as well as the input. Now your wheels and tires, uh, it's gonna follow the same standards as pretty much every other trailer. You do wanna pop your wheel covers off. You're gonna wanna check your lug nut torque. Uh, we recommend 100 foot-pounds, and then also keep your tire pressure adjusted per the trailer manufacturer recommendations. Moving on down the side here, this last compartment on the exterior that we're going to go across is going to be for our black tank or our cassette toilet. So in here, we do have our cassette. We also have a water valve. Uh, let's go over the water valve first, which is going to be right here. And this is actually a water shut off to the toilet itself. So right now where our water is actually shut off to the toilet, if we turn this, that would actually allow water to flow to the toilet. Now to remove the cassette, once it's full, or if you're gonna get ready to break camp, to pull this out, uh, make sure your flap inside is closed. We're just gonna lift up on this blue tab and then we're gonna pull the cassette out. Now, once this comes out, you would take this to a dump or to a toilet or something like that. You're gonna rotate this out. This is your holding handle here, and you can hold onto it back here. And this little button is a vent release, okay? So if this is super full and you're trying to dump it, it's kind of like dumping a water jug too fast. It's gonna to try to gurgle or suck in on the wall. So you push that, it's gonna allow fresh air in so it doesn't do that. Push that down, dump it out, you're good to go. Um, and then if you wanna do some extra cleaning on it, you're gonna remove the cover and then you can turn this little blue knob, which is gonna open the flapper in the cassette and allow you to get in there and spray it out. So the last thing on the cassette here is it can, it's got wheels on it, which means it also has a handle. So this can be placed down onto the ground and kind of make it easier for transport for you if it's heavy to carry. Now to put it back in, make sure everything's all closed up as you see it here. We're just gonna slide it back in, wheels first. Push it all the way in until you hear that latch in. You're good to go. There are some other water lines and vents in here. This is not a storage compartment, so please don't shove a bunch of stuff in there. Key lock again. Moving around to the back, we've got our tail lights, got a couple of pull handles. This trailer is super light, so it's very easy to move around. License plate's gonna mount here and it is um, already accessorized with like a Keter rail on the edges for add-on accessories, our rear stabilizers. And 
Again, wheels and tires. We do have 110 outlet here on the side. Down here, uh, just in front of the door side wheel, you will find your freshwater tank drain. So if you've got fr your freshwater tank full, you wanna drain it, this is gonna be your valve and it's gonna drain out right there. Okay, we've got everything covered on the outside, so let's go inside and check it out. New handle, we haven't seen this one before. It is still keyed locked, but it rotates to open and close. So we just rotate it to the left, it's gonna release it. Now on the inside, it's a very similar st style knob or handle. It's gonna rotate to the left and then to lock it, you just turn it to the right. If it is in this position rotated to the right, that's gonna lock the outside handle and not allow you to open it. So let's go on inside, check the rest of it out. Uh, just inside the door, we're gonna find your fire extinguisher. Same fire extinguisher we've been seeing for years. Just make sure that we've got it in the green and replace it as required and you're good to go. Just above that, you're gonna find your little wine rack right here that you can fit a few bottles of wine in. Next to that, we've got two switches. The top one is gonna be your overhead patio light. And the uh, one just below that is gonna be what I call the headlights. They're on the front of the trailer. There's one on each side that turn on at the front lower. To the left of the entry door, we are gonna find two storage compartments. Top one is gonna be your larger storage, which is gonna hold your table, your leg, and then if you want to, you can fit your crank handle for your stabilizers in there. And it is equipped with a light overhead with a push button on it. You do have a small storage cabinet above that one. Okay, so in the back of the trailer on the inside is where we're gonna find your bathroom in the barefoot. Now, our toilet, we talked about the cassette. Now it's got a it's got a pump on it. So right back here in the corner, you're gonna see that blue button that says that for buy it. You're gonna push that. That's how you're gonna put water in the bowl. You just push the blue circle. Inside, you got your seats. And to get it to flush, once you've done uh, all your deeds, you're just gonna pull that lever to the right and that's gonna open the flap and allow everything down into the cassette. Then you're gonna push it back to the left to close it. Now we've got two compartments just behind the toilet. The top one is gonna be storage and you will see that there is a sewer vent pipe that goes up to the roof in the back there. The compartment below that is gonna also have your Alda uh, fluid tank in it so you, it's very easily accessible in this trailer to check your fluid levels and it does have a high and low line on it and you do want to check your fluids and make sure they stay within spec. We've got your sink over here with a hot and cold knob on it and this is also going to be your shower head so this pulls out and it hangs right over here on the front wall which is going to now become your shower head. This is equipped with a multi-spray pattern head on it and then it just stores back into the faucet position for travel towel hanger and you also have a mirror now the window in the bathroom is frosted so you don't have to worry about anybody peeking in and it uses safety lock latches so they do have little buttons on them that you have to push to get the knob to rotate and when you push these out, these have a very light click to them to where they actually lock in place. So you do have to listen. If you just push it out, chances are it's gonna come right back in. So you wanna push them out slow and you can kinda hear that click. That's once you pass that click, just let it down lightly and it should hold. Now, if you want it to close, you're gonna push quickly and it will close down. Now the bathroom is equipped with a light with a push button on it and it's got two different brightnesses and off. So you can set your likeness there. The bathroom door is gonna be a track door. You just push it closed, bring it on around and give yourself some privacy. Moving on to the kitchen. Start up top here, we've got your smoke alarm. This is gonna be your nine volt smoke alarm. Check your battery in it, maintain it, take care of it. This is gonna be another one of our forced air vents right here. And our switch right here is gonna run your overhead cabin lights. Overhead storage with sliding doors. Now these are uh, plastic or acrylic, they are not glass. 
and then the switch for your access, uh, accent lighting your, uh, in all the cabinet backing is gonna be on the right side of those for all of that lighting there. Moving down, we've got your monitor panel. So this is gonna be monitoring your battery, your fresh tank, and your gray tank. Now remember this unit is not equipped with a black tank. It does have it labeled on here, but it is not equipped with a black tank since we're using a cassette toilet, so we don't need it. Uh, water pump, you're gonna kick that on. If that red light is on, you are running on the water pump. It's just a switch. It is a 12 volt pressure demand pump, which means if you're running on the pump, when pressure drops in the system, the pump runs and it will vibrate and make noise, which is completely normal. The two control panels we hear are gonna be your Air 8 air conditioning system and your Alda control panel for your hot water and heater. So let's start first with our Air 8 control panel. This is gonna be a touch screen. Our power button is right in the middle. We're gonna push that. You can see this is gonna come up with our room temperature. To adjust your desired temperature is gonna be your negative and positives on the left and right. And then this one right here is gonna be your desired fan speed. Um, this is only for air conditioning. Now your air conditioning vents are gonna be the little circular vents that are up high. We've got one here. We've got one in the bathroom um, is where we're gonna get our air from. Now the one below that for our Alta control, this is gonna be for hot water and our heat. Now this is a radiant heat, not a for forced air. Uh, they have added one unit that use uh, one blower uh, vent that has forced air in this model. So to turn that on, we're going to push the power button, allow this to boot up. Once we get there, we're going to see our main screen over here on the right is going to show our actual cabin temperature as it detects right now. This button means, hey, we're plugged into 110. I'm sensing shore power. The house temperature here is telling you what that is picking up and that this is just for the circulation pump here. Now to actually do anything, we're going to push menu. And you can see we're gonna have all of our options here. The top one again is gonna be our desired cabin temperature. So if we don't want any heat, we actually wanna take this and bottom it all the way out to, I think it goes all the way down to like 40 degrees, but you would run this all the way down. That way we don't actually circulate any of that hot glycol and create any heat, so 41. The next one down is gonna be our shower boost. So you've got two settings here. It's gonna give you a little extra hot water if you've got maybe back-to-back -back showers. And then we're gonna find our power sources. So the electric bolt is gonna be our 110 or our electric service. So you've got one and you've got two. Now, if you put it in the 2KW mode, you need to make sure you are plugged into a true 30 amp service to power that efficiently. And then the last one here is gonna be for gas operation. If it's green, it's gonna light up on gas and operate. Now over here, this is gonna be your settings button you're going to push that it's going to take you into another menu allow you to make some adjustments uh, they've got night mode day mode we do recommend that all of these uh, stay turned off they can cause some operational concerns that maybe you were not expecting if they get turned on or anything like that uh, temperature adjustment for celsius fahrenheit so uh, this is for going to be for like your temperature offset so you can kind of adjust maybe it's not reading to your liking this one's going to be for your pump mode we do recommend the thermal mode the last menu is going to be like a reset um, some external settings which everything is turned off on you don't have any external accessories um, service and installed accessories now this does have um, like the booster here. So you can see that that is an option here that is lit up and available to turn on. That's gonna be that one vent that is gonna be forced air uh, heat now. And then the service mode. This one is really, really useful if you are questioning whether your Alda unit is actually operating. If you push that, you're gonna get in here, you're gonna see glycol temp, water temp, fan, rotation, and overheat. So if this unit was actually running, we'd be able to see our glycol temp increase, our water temp increase, our fan RPM, and then if it's in overheat or not. If it's not, you're going to see a no, which is great. Um, and that's really the only screen I recommend checking on the consumer end. Hey, is it working or not? Go here. Boom, done. You're good to go. Now, back to here, if you just leave this, 
it's going to default back to your um, this screen eventually and you're back to your main screen turn it off if you don't need any heat or hot water you're just going to turn that off now moving on down to the kitchen we've got a two burner <laughs> two burner Dometic cooktop glass took cooktop cover needs to be open to uh, anytime you're cooking do not lower it with the burners lit and also allow your burners to cool before you do close it now to get it to light you're just going to turn your knob to the light position and it's got an electric sparker on board that you're just going to push and hold until you get lit and that goes for both burners now your sink does have a fold away faucet which if you're a new camp uh, customer already you are absolutely used to this this does have to be stored in order to close it and it definitely needs to be stored and closed for travel now for water usage you're going to rotate up and down for temperature and then away from the actual faucet to turn the water flow on and off moving below that we are going to have a storage drawer and a storage cabinet We've got a vent here just to allow some heat from the cooktop and from our refrigerator to escape. Now our refrigerator is going to be our isotherm refrigerator. It's got a freezer, fridge, and the control knob is going to be right here, kind of below the light, if you will. It's going to be a rotating knob. You just rotate that all the way to zero is going to be off. Anywhere in between is going to be your desired temperature setting. While we're down here, this one vent right here, this is going to be our one forced air vent from the Alda unit that is going to be called the booster on the control panel. Uh, moving across from the kitchen, we are going to have another storage compartment. All works the same with the latches that New Camp has been using. Overhead, we've got a couple of storage bags on the wall and then another little compartment inside moving into our living room we do have another ac vent here and we've got our max fan control remote which is going to control the remote uh, the fan basically over the kitchen here um, now it's got manual and auto mode you're just going to push the power button if it's in auto mode, things are going to come on and you're going to go. So right now we're actually in manual mode. You can see that we're set to 100% fan speed. We can turn that down by using the button here. Now, if you want to go to auto mode, the light's going to move over to here. You can see, and now we're actually going to work based on temperature. If you want it colder, you're going to move that down and it's going to automatically detect temperature and decide where to set that fan speed to achieve the temperature. The last two buttons down at the bottom are this one's going to be to reverse our airflow, whether we want airflow in or out. And the other one's going to be for the lid, whether we want it up or down. So talking about the fantastic fan, we do have a fuse on board the fan. You're just going to rotate this little knob and wiggle this out. Inside you will find a glass fuse. And there is a little element in there, much like a light bulb. Um, if you ever checked an incandescent light bulb, if that little element in there is blown or open or separated, then this fuse is no longer any good and needs to be replaced. Now you can, if for some reason the motor fails on this, you can manually crank this right here at the knob to open or close that vent fan if needed. Now, moving right back down to each side of the cabinets here, we've got a couple of accessory ports. Um, right next to the kitchen, we do have a 110 outlet, and then we've got a double USB charge port. On the other side, by the door, we're going to have a 110 outlet, and we're going to have a 12-volt accessory port, much like a cigarette lighter, for running some 12-volt accessories, charging things up there. Okay, our last two charge ports in the barefoot are going to be right up here by the couch area. We're going to have a USB port on each side. That pretty much takes care of all of our outlets and USB ports. So let's move down by the floor. And let's talk about our power distribution panel. Now this unit is a uh, WFCO auto detect unit, which means it is prepped and ready for lead acid or lithium profile battery. To open it, you're gonna just push the door, which is then gonna allow it to pop open. On the left, you will find your 110 circuit breakers. On the right, you will find your 12 volt fuses. 
I do recommend picking up a variety pack of fuses, keeping them on hand just in case you do blow one. Now the auto detect unit, the way that kind of works is it does have to actually go through a battery depletion cycle in order to detect what type of battery is in it. So you may not see uh, any charging take place until it actually detects the type of battery that's in it. It's gonna allow it to discharge and then recharge to detect, to detect what type of battery it is. Just above that, we do have your uh, GFCI outlet. Um, if you do not have 110 power at some of your outlets, this is the best place to start checking. It is just gonna be a trip and reset there for you and make sure it is in the reset mode. Um, now, as far as uh, storage in this, there is a little bit of storage under this bench. There is no storage under here. This is gonna have the backside of your power distribution panel. It's got your Alda unit in it. The front one that I'm sitting on does have your Air 8 in here, but we do have access to your battery disconnect switch under this one, which you will see right here cut through the top of the panel. And to make sure that is turned to the on position, we rotate it. You wanna make sure that this cut notch is green. If it's red, like it is here, it is disconnected and that is connected. Now to move, remove all of the um, sidewall cushions and these two little bolster cushions, they do have snaps on the back to remove them. So you just reach in and unsnap them. You can see that there which then allows you to remove other cushions and gain access to areas that maybe you need to. Now this front one do, does just pull out, so you can get into that. The side ones are snapped in as well. And one thing that I do throw a little bit of caution to is since these do tuck in so tightly underneath your shades, I do recommend that you push down on them when you go to put them in or remove them so you're not putting undue stress on your shade. Now to operate your shades, um, it's gonna be the standard shade that New Camp has been using. It's gonna slide up for your nightshade. You can pull down for your ventilation shade, your bug screen, your day shade, whatever you would like to use that for. Now to open and close all your windows, except for the front window, we are gonna have rotating latches that have a button on them. So you're gonna push the button, which then allows you to rotate the latch and then allows you to open the window. Now this window op operates the same as every other window and every other shade in here. It has the click stops on the stays. So just make sure you listen for that and allows it to open and stay. To get it to close again, it's gonna be a quick push and allows it to close. When you rotate these, make sure it's pulled all the way in. These do have like a ventilation spot. You can see they've got a notch here where you can kind of lock that in and it'll leave you just a small amount of ventilation, which is really nice on a cool day, but maybe it's raining. So when you pull close all the way in, make sure we're all the way in over the latch on all, every single one of them. And that way uh, you don't lose the window. If you leave them in the ventilation position or they're not fully latched, these windows can catch wind when you're traveling and they will blow off. So keep that in mind. So our one little storage compartment in the uh, barefoot is gonna be on the door side of the trailer. Underneath our cushion here, uh, once you remove all your cushions, you can tip this open. And underneath you do have storage space here. And then this wood box over to the left, the cover is held on with four screws. Your battery is actually gonna be mounted into this box does vent through the floor of the trailer if you're running a standard lead acid and it's completely sealed with a weather gasket so you're good there. This little tube on top is just for venting the Alda unit and servicing procedures. And to make this into a bed, each side is gonna have the slats that pull out. So this just pulls out like that. And then this side is also gonna pull out You're gonna slide all your cushions into place. And make yourself a nice large lounging area, which looks really comfy to me. All right, the last thing to cover on the inside here is gonna be our table setup. We've got our table pole 
And this side is gonna be the side that goes to the floor. Now I have seen this a couple of times, maybe you've got kids or something they take here and they twist this thing down because this does screw in to tighten this pole to the floor. So before you even get started, make sure this is threaded out. You're gonna fit that piece down into the floor and then you're gonna rotate it to the right to tighten it down. Once you're there, you do get a nice stable pole. And then the tabletop is just going to slide right on and you can kind of hear a little click that is a um, like a detent mechanism that's help holding it in place. Once it's there, you can rotate this table to your liking, to your comfort, to remove it, pick up on it, set it aside, unthread your pole to the left. You'll feel once that is tight and then allow you to remove it. Now again, these store in the back cabinet by the entry door. And you can see on the bottom of the table here that there is a uh, latch catch, if you will. This is what helps keep this stored into the storage compartment. So let me show you how to do that real quick. So like I was saying, the table stores into this compartment by the entry door. You can see we've got two little holders down at the bottom of the cabinet. So the bottom of the table is gonna sit into those first. Make sure your keeper, your latch is at the top and then just push it into place. Rotate the latch down on top of it and you're ready to go. All right, everybody, thanks for joining us as we went through the Barefoot by New Camp, the 2023 year model. If I've missed anything or you have any questions about anything we talked about, just reach out to us here at Princess Craft.